Hi, we're the Strong Family. I'm Roland. And I'm Buren. Today we'll be learning about John Lewis. John Robert Lewis was born outside of Troy, Alabama on February the 21st, 1940. Lewis had a happy childhood. Though he needed to work hard to assist his sharecropper's parents, but he chaffed against the unfairness of segregation. He was particularly disappointed when the Supreme Court ruled in 1954 Brown versus the Board of Education did not affect his school life. However, hearing Kane's sermon and news of the 1955-56 Montgomery boycott inspired Lewis to act for the change he wanted to see. In 1957, Lewis left Alabama to attend the American Baptist Theological Seminary in Nashville, Tennessee. There, he learned about nonviolent protests and helped to organize sit-ins at segregated lunch counters. He was arrested during these demonstrations, which upset his mother, but Lewis was committed to the civil rights movement and went on to participate in the Freedom Rise of 1961. The Freedom Rider challenged the segregation facility they encountered at Interstate Bus Terminal in the South, which had been deemed illegal for the Supreme Court. It was dangerous work that resulted in arrests and beating for many involved, including Lewis. Lewis became chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1963. That same year, as one of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement, he helped to plan the March on Washington. Lewis was the youngest speaker at the event. He had to alter his speech in order to please other organizers, but still delivered a powerful oration, oration rather, that declared, we all recognize the fact that if any racial, social, political, and economic changes are to take place in our society, that the people, the masses, must bring them about. After the March on Washington in 1964, the Civil Rights Act became law. However, this did not make it easy for African Americans to vote in the South. To bring attention to this struggle, Lewis and Jose William led a march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama on March 7, 1965. After crossing the Imut Patuk Bridge, the marshes were attacked by state troopers. Lewis was severely beaten once more, this time suffering a fractured skull. The violent attack was recorded and disseminated throughout the country, and the image proved too powerful to ignore. Bloody Sunday, as they was labored, speeded up the passage of 1965's Voting Right Act. Lewis left the SNCC in 1966. Though devastated by the assassinations of King and Robert Kennedy in 1968, Lewis continued his work to enfranchise minorities. In 1970, he became director of the Voter Education Project. During his tenure, the VEP helped to register millions of minority voters. Lewis ran for office himself in 1981, winning a seat on the Atlanta City Council. In 1986, he was elected to the House of Representatives representing Georgia's 5th District. He was one of the most respected members of Congress. Since entering office, he has called for health care reform, measures to fight poverty, and improvements in education. Most importantly, he oversaw multiple renewals of the Voting Rights Act. When the Supreme Court struck down part of the law in 2013, Shelby County v. Holder, Lewis decried the decision as a dagger into the hearts of voting rights. In December 2019, Lewis announced that he had been diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Although he was clear-eyed about the prognosis. prognosis, Lewis said he felt encouraged that medical advance had made this type of cancer treatable in many cases, and that he intended to return to work as soon as possible. Lewis passed away on July 17, 2020. Stay tuned as we will be coming with more of these videos all month long. Goodbye. Goodbye.